welcome back to Self-Serving Skillet. Today I'm going to make you one of my favorite food memories. It was about 2016, 2017 and I was bartending in a restaurant here in St. Paul which sadly no longer exists. Heirloom was the name of the place and it was a chef owned and operated establishment and they did a really good job. I ended up following that chef to heirloom from the restaurant that he and I were previously working at. And it's those two jobs, and in particular that chef and that kitchen crew, where I learned the most about food. So this particular memory begins on December 23rd. It's the day before Christmas Eve, and chef being a family man isn't going to make anyone work on Christmas Eve or Christmas, so it's the day before a holiday weekend for us. And if you've never worked in a restaurant before, that is a very rare thing. And everyone in the restaurant was just completely worn out. We had had a holiday season that just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming. No one had had a day off in weeks. If you were working 50 hours a week, that was at the shallow end of the swimming pool. And we were all just worn out. When it started to die down, maybe 9 o'clock or so, the sous chef came around and took a collection from all of us. He didn't tell us what it was for, but we sort of assumed that he was going to go to the liquor store. The eight or nine people that were on staff that night all threw him five or ten bucks, and out he went. Now, we were still working, we were still wrapping up, and even after all of the customers leave, like, there's a lot of cleaning to do. The restaurant closes, and our sous chef's not back yet. And we go, what the hell? This dude has our money and he's skipping out on cleaning? So we were all getting a little irritated and the grumpiness factor was just amping up and amping up and amping up. Well, he gets back and we're almost done and he starts whipping up duck eggnog. And the minute I put that to my lips, just all of the hard work, all of the stress of the holidays, just all of the irritation that I was feeling completely melted. So without further ado, I give you duck eggnog. All right, you know me, give me an egg and I'll build you an empire. Give me a duck egg and I'm gonna show you something even better. Duck eggs are creamy, rich, delicious, nutrient dense. You can definitely do everything that I'm doing here with chicken eggs as well. And since this is self-serving skillet, I'm going to give you the proportions for making one, however I am making eggnog for three people. So in this small of a batch, you don't have to worry about compensating for a slightly smaller chicken egg. For each serving, I want about half a cup of whole milk, and I'm going to put that on the stove and bring it to a simmer. Half a cup times three, there's one and a half cups in this pot. Next, I'm going to take three duck eggs. And these will often come in varying sizes, so I'm going to use my largest one and my smallest one and a sort of medium-sized duck egg. Next, I'm just going to fish these yolks out with just my hands. Look at those yolks, though. Look at how big and beautiful those are. I'm just going to come in very gently underneath the yolk and that membrane around the yolk is just sort of going to slide off. All right, that's our big one there. You want to be kind of careful uh, not to puncture your yolks. Getting whites into the yolks is not a huge deal, but getting yolks into the whites means they're not going to uh, fluff, up, fluff up as nicely. Famous last words. For every egg yolk, I want about a tablespoon, tablespoon plus a teaspoon of sugar. This is a quarter cup. And I'm just gonna mix that all together and wait until it sort of comes together in a uniform, a uniform color. You can also add more sugar if you like it sweet. I don't like it as sweet and at the end, I'm going to add rum. I like rum in mine. Uh, Whiskey is also very nice. Cognac 
That's very nice too. If you're using a rum, uh, I'd go with a barrel aged rum instead of a spiced rum. That kind of looks like one thing now. The sugar granules aren't just hanging out. To that I'm going to add a quarter cup of heavy cream. I'm just going to whisk that in. A quarter cup of cream per serving. So I had three quarters cups of heavy cream. And then here I have nicely simmering whole milk that I'm gonna add in very slowly. And you want it a little bit at a time so that your eggs don't scramble. Once that's all in and all incorporated, this whole thing can go back in the pot, go back on the stove, and I want it to reach about 170, 180 degrees. Take that temperature now and see how far I have to go. Just hit 170, which is about 75, 76C. I'm a big proponent of freshly grated nutmeg. Really any fresh herb or spice is gonna get you more mileage than buying something in a can from a grocery store. If you wanna go that route though, don't use last Christmas's nutmeg. It's had a year to lose all of its flavor. Go out, buy something, fresh, buy something new, even if it was ground two, three months ago, it's still going to be better than that stuff you've got hanging out in your cabinet. I would normally take this with my microplane and uh, just zest that over the top of this eggnog, but I need kind of a lot, so I'm going to take a whole nutmeg and put it in the spice grinder. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm willing to try it. Still got some chunks in there, so I'm gonna strain. You can do this while it's on the stove, and it works a little bit better to get the nutmeg into the eggnog. But I like to do it at the end so that I can taste everything and just add more right away if I want to. Oh man, that's nice. This is your last opportunity to really season it. This is your last opportunity to add more sugar. I think it needs, yeah, I think it needs just a pinch of salt to bring some of that nutmeg out. I'm gonna put this in its separate container because we are done heating. I want there to be a little bit of headspace because we're not quite done yet. While we're waiting for that to chill down, by the way, I did not put it in the refrigerator. You never want to put anything in the refrigerator that is over room temperature. I put it outside on my balcony because it's December. If you don't have access to the outside from your home or cold weather where you are, you can just put it in an ice bath or just a cool water bath. But while we're doing that, we can whip up our egg whites. Now you can do this with an electric uh, beater. I do not have one. I have a uh, manual beater, which for me uh, suits the better purpose because it doesn't <laughs> take up so much space to store. It's one of my pet peeves about tools is storing them. If I don't need it, I don't want to store it. But 
The electric beater is nice because I can keep the bowl steady with one hand while I beat with the other. This one I need two hands, so I'm going to take a damp towel and just put it down in a ring here. And it'll stay nice and nice and put. Now when it gets to this sort of foamy stage, looking a little bit like shaving cream or a nice warm bath, you're good to add your sugar. I'm going for a tablespoon of sugar for the three duck egg yolks. And we're just gonna mix that in until we get soft peaks. I would usually add the booze now. However, I'm gonna split this batch because one person that I'm serving is a child. And the egg white step is completely optional. If you're not gonna do this, I would suggest whipping your cream and not adding it in until this point. It'll just give your eggnog a little bit more body. And I'm just gonna Mix this in with the utensil that I already have. Give that one final taste before, yeah, you see it nice, rich, thick now, before we section it off. And that's, that's truly amazing. That, that takes all of my holiday woes and care is just completely away. While this is all mixed, I'm gonna take about a cup of this, 250 milliliters, and separate it off from the batch, and that will be the child's portion, while I adult the rest of this eggnog. Let's see, a quarter cup is two fluid ounces. Let's go for half a cup of rum in this entire thing. I'm using a Jamaican rum, and Jamaican rums tend to be a little more funky, and I like that a lot. If you don't like that a lot, Puerto Rican rums are very nice. Barbados. Always be tasting. That's what I want. Oh, <laughs> ah, that's nice. All right. So before we serve, I'm going to put the rest of this in the refrigerator, chill down once more. Everything's nice and room temperature. And then we should be ready to serve tonight in about an hour, hour and a half. Just make sure it gets cold first. Well, I did have one more nutmeg that I was going to freshly grate over the top, but someone decided that it was a little ball to be played with and has batted it somewhere where I cannot find it. So, uh, internet, this is Dr. Malcolm. Dr. Malcolm, this is, this is everyone. Bad kitty, go away. Another optional step that I forgot about is vanilla. About a quarter of a vanilla bean, the caviar from a vanilla bean, or about a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract per serving. So we would have three quarters teaspoons here. And this is fine to mix in at the end because we're actually gonna need to mix this up anyway. The, those egg whites tend to float to the top. So anytime you come back to this, it's going to be need to be mixed again. And as you get more and more time, you'll begin to see the meringue sort of floating to the top, and that's sort of when I like it. There's no way to microplane that nutmeg that the kitten took away from me, but I do have a little bit more in my spice grinder. We'll just put that on top. You could also put a shot more rum, whiskey, cognac, whatever you want in here. Mm. And that's just a hug on a cold winter's day. 
just a hair boozy and uh, oof and very warming uh, too. Merry Christmas or whatever holiday you celebrate. Luckily this drink is non-secular.